I'm Paul Page on YouTube, and this is GP Laps. Yes, it's GP Laps. Thank you, Paul. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to IndyCar Racing 2, 1990 season, round number five, Detroit. Downtown Detroit circuit. Yes, everybody say hi, Paul. <laughs> I hope you're all well out there. I hope you're well. It's been a while, as always. It feels like I say that every time. Uh, but back for some IndyCar Racing 2. I'm excited for this. I've, I've been kind of dreading this race a little bit, as I put in the description before. Not because I don't want to race in Detroit. I'm excited to show off this circuit. This circuit is is quite amazing as far as IndyCar Racing 2 tracks go. It's a, it's a totally new circuit. If you were here for the 89 season, which I did almost two years ago now, <laughs> it's taking us uh, double the time to do seasons than a, than a real year, but uh, I raced at Belle Isle uh, because this track was not complete yet. But this is the actual track that IndyCar Kart, the track you're going to see today, is the actual track Kart raced at uh, from 89 through 91, I believe. And uh, they took over from Formula One racing at this circuit. And uh, after a few years, I think, just from watching some of the broadcasts, it seemed like this track had a reputation for just being too bumpy. Formula One didn't like it, which is apparently why they left. I'm sure there was other reasons as well. But uh, IndyCar took it over, raced there for three years, and then they ended up going to Belle Isle, where they were for years and years and years until just this past season they went back downtown. But that is a completely different circuit to this one. Uh, but back, so if you can remember, we'll take a look at the championships. So this is a part of the uh, 1990 season we're simulating. This is IndyCar Racing 2. It's a game, a sim from... 1995, but it's we've modded it to uh, to do the 1990 season with this. We'll continue our championship. Championship so far has been very much, very much a Michael Andretti championship. He is he is so far ahead. He's got two wins on the season. He won at Phoenix. He won at Indianapolis. He's placed well at Long Beach and Milwaukee. I, I think it's about time that Michael has a bad day. So why not today? I hope he DQs because if he doesn't, I mean the championship is. At this point, we'll look at the points in a second, but at this point, he's he is so far in the lead. Milwaukee, I finished second. It was a great race. I think I could have challenged Michael for the win, uh, but coming to the, like two or three to go, we got a yellow flag, and that and that ended things there. At Long Beach, man, if you remember Long Beach, I got taken out by Roberto Guerrero halfway through. He just dive bombed me coming into turn one. Somehow my car was was fine enough to limp back to the pits, get some new tires, and continue. So I got away with a fifth there, which, all things considered, it, it could have been a lot worse, but I did finish two laps down. Indianapolis was... <laughs> I'm still I'm still upset about. I made so many errors in this one, but ultimately, uh, I led a bunch of laps, and passing Willie T. Ribs down the back straightaway, we just came together. Uh, lapping him, came together and, and had a crash, and ended that one just past halfway. And then Milwaukee, last time out... Uh, also some drama there. I don't know if I had a car to win that one. I think Allison Jr. was was somewhere else, but I was pretty quick and uh, had some run-ins with cars towards the end of the race. Uh, so today today's all about surviving because this track is the track it is and, and, and where we are in the championship. I need to finish this race. If Michael Andretti wins it, then so be it. But... If I don't finish this race, I'm going to be very, very disappointed. So these are the points, and this is why there's not a lot of hope for the championship. All right, we're only five, five rounds in. There's plenty of racing to go, but it seems like Michael's got something else this season. So he is he's sitting at 70 points with the two wins and four top fives. Four for four top fives. That's why he's doing so well. But two wins as well. Ahead of Bobby Ray Hall, and it's really a battle for second at the moment. I would say for the rest of the top five. Bobby Ray Hall, Allen Sir Jr., Myself, Ryan Axelson, and uh, Emerson Fittipaldi in fifth there. We're all within a few points of each other, and depending on how things finish today, I'm sure that'll change. Ari is not too far out of it. Wouldn't even count out Danny Sullivan. Rick Mears, Eddie Cheever, they seem to be a little bit slower. So we'll see how things progress. We'll see how things progress, but 
Uh, it's it's looking like a Michael Andretti championship, and so we're really <laughs> battling battling for second. He has to have issues at some point, though. So maybe maybe today is the day. So here we are, Detroit, 2.5 mile street circuit. And what I'm going to do here is actually jump out for a quick practice lap, and I want to show you, just talk you through the track, and then we'll hop into qualifying and everything. I've done a lot of practice around here over the past a uh, few weeks, just here and there. But it's a 17 turn course. It's made by SK, who I'm not sure if SK is here in the chat today, but it's so impressive for IndyCar 2 standards. Hey, oh, SK is here. So very, very much well done. In all my testing, I haven't had any issues or anything with the track. It's been, it's been lovely to race. So we'll roll out of the pits here. If, if you're familiar with Formula One in the 80s, you, you maybe know this track. We'll come down. Turn one is a massive sweeping corner. It's barely two corners. I think turns one and two. 180 degree corner. That's a tricky one. Then we'll shoot down to turn three. Probably overtaking here. Now this track, it's a city track. So walls on both sides. I'm running at full damage. This is a full real championship. Uh, full damage, all that stuff. So if I even touch the wall just a little bit, at minimum I'm damaging a wing. If not, you know, destroying my suspension. It's very realistic in that way. Because of how IndyCar 2 is, it's it's not as easy to control, I think, as a modern game. So it's it's really tricky. But we'll see we'll see if I can get away with this one. We'll come down here. This is another good braking over overtaking zone. Bit of a switch back, and this will head us. This is so cool. Head us onto a long straight underneath a parking garage here in the tunnel. And then a heavy braking zone at the end of it. Get it down to uh, first gear here, another switch back. And this is probably the most interesting part of the course. Uh, something that really defines it. As we come to the end of the straightaway, we'll have an, a double left-hander. And this will send us down underneath a pedestrian bridge. So double left-hander here. Down pretty much single file lane road here underneath a pedestrian bridge. Sweep it underneath there. Now we got a tight little almost chicane entry corner. Just need to be careful here. Underneath the tunnel, we got one more heavy braking zone. This this corner I've, I've had a lot of trouble with for some reason. Just always braking too late there. I got to be extra careful. We'll come through the final switch back, and this sets us up for the front stretch. So need a good exit out of here and uh, slip streaming. Hopefully some passing down the front stretch. Look for the braking markers down the right side. Just past the 300 board there. Heavy on the brakes. Down to second gear for turn one. So that's a lap of this place, and. Uh, as you can see, not a lot of room for error. Really no room for error. That's why this is going to be so hard. It's a lot like, if you remember Meadowlands from last season, just how difficult that was. But we're on full damage now. So it makes it even trickier. All right, we'll just round out this lap. I'll practice a pit entry here. Come through a kink. That kink's hard, too. A bit of an extra runoff on the right side. Through a bit of a sweeper, then. Yeah, no, t no tank slappers, I hope. So what I've been doing to try to make it, to try to actually get to the finish, is treating the white lines as the walls. And I think that's what I have to do to actually finish this race. You could, of course, make up a little bit of extra time. Maybe in qualifying, if things are looking good, I can try it. You can make up a little bit of extra time by cutting. Oh, I missed the corner there. Cutting the track a little bit, just on the insides of those white lines, but you're flirting with disaster getting that close to the wall. So it's really, really best I've found to just treat the white lines as if it's the wall. And, uh, yeah, just, just pray that I don't make a mistake at some point. Because there's no, there's no room for error. There's no runoffs or anything. IndyCar 2 doesn't let you have runoffs in the traditional sense, so. Alright, we'll come down, final couple of corners here behind Bettenhausen. Uh, jump into the pits then. Practice pit entry, of course. IndyCar 2, you're always the first, first stall. All right. All right. All right, in the pits. So, we'll, uh, we'll talk strategy and stuff after, but we're going to jump into qualifying and uh, load my setup. Using the same setup I used in the race, I'm just going to lower my fuel a bit. Lower my fuel just a little bit, and uh, we'll go out. So, we're going to do qualifying... Um, this is a, it's a road course, right? So you've got 
a few minutes here to do some times. Goal, of course, get a banking lap, get ahead of all the crazy traffic, and then see if I can uh, see if I can actually get up front. But I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to to get onto the front row or anything. All right. So I got to do a 148 to start <laughs> start at the back. Looks like the leaders are in the 143s for now. There are other cars out on the track with me, so I could hit traffic and stuff, which always makes qualifying interesting. Trying to boost down here for a little bit of laps. If you haven't been here yet, because I know it's been a while, some new folks found the channel. I do have in-car adjustments, so I've got anti-roll bars. I've got boost control. Boost itself will leave on full unless we need to save a lot of fuel doesn't really play into engine damage at all. Uh, and then the front rear roll bar, if I need to adjust the handling, it's much more important on the ovals generally than it is on the road road and street courses, although if you want to eke out every tenth, it's good to uh, good to play with them. So we've got some, some adjustments we can make if, if the car's not feeling very good during the race or if I damage it at some point. Knock on wood, that doesn't happen today. We'll come out for the outlap. I think I can get into the low 1 minute 40s range, so hopefully that can get me a decent way up the grid. But they're in the low, low 1 minute 40s up front, and they're likely to improve as this session continues. Yeah, Darren, I used to play this with the keyboard for years and years. It is, it's not easy, but it's totally doable. I will, I will say, no matter the controls, this this game is very tricky. It's the handling and stuff is a little finicky. You got to get really, really used to it. All right, we'll come through. I'm just going to turn the boost back up. So we'll try to set a banker lap. Just make sure the car uh, makes it through a lap. Just about eight minutes to go in the session. So plenty of time to do a few laps. down to turn one, third gear, second gear, just let it coast through you. It's easy to get on the throttle too early through there. Yeah, if anybody's curious too on how to how to get this game running or how I'm using a wheel and stuff, I've got a tutorial. It's in the, it should be in the description of the stream, I think. Come through just nice and easy through here. It's so easy to Chuck it out into the wall. Down to second gear. You can run wide through this one. There's a little extra runoff here. Just dancing through the streets. I, I get a, a very good thrill racing around this track. It's It's got a great flow to it, surprisingly, for a street course. But I just... Some of my testing, I've just felt like I've gotten in the zone. Just hammer out laps. But need to be careful because you get too comfortable and then you make a mistake. And uh, all it takes is one little brush to the wall and it's all over. need to respect the braking zones. I think the easiest way I'll throw this away is uh, lap traffic <laughs> or just out braking myself into a corner. Yeah, I guess I haven't mentioned at all trying to get around traffic here. It's going to be a test in patience today. A bit wide there. All right, coming to complete the first lap. It's an okay lap. It's just a banker. Make sure I don't start on the last row, because that would certainly make things tricky. Oh, P1! What? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. All right, we'll continue, though, because you can see, actually, Allenser Jr. set a better time than he had before as well, so... He's right behind me. Ooh, as I did tap the wall there. I think I got away with that. So, all right. Provisionally P1 already. See, we'll see how things progress. I'm going to stay out here and try to better it because they certainly can do the same. We're likely to hit some lap traffic at some point. I thought it was just a banker lap. I didn't think that would put me out front. I'll certainly take it, though. I don't know if I've gotten a pole this season. Or I did at Indy. That's right. I did get the pole at Indy before everything went sideways. We've got that city 
street circuit flow going. You'll see us show short shift quite a bit. Over revving the engine is, is one of the easiest ways to break your car in this game. And uh, you don't really lose that much acceleration short shifting most gears. It's just the last couple of shifts that you really want to rev it out. So it's much better to shift around 11, 12,000 most of the gears. And then once you get in fifth and sixth, then you let it ring out. couple corners. I don't know if this lap's better. I got really close to the wall there. No, it was not better. That's crazy. How was my first lap so good? All right, we'll continue on though. Just about four minutes to go. so tempting to go flat out there and I think if you got the line perfect you might be able to do it but I have hurt a few cars in that corner trying to trying to get through faster than that on the entry there, but it's able to get the apex anyway. Just sticking to my rule, the uh, white lines, that's what I, I don't want to cross those if I can avoid it, especially on the inside of corners. Oh, I saw somebody jump up the order there. Andretti. That's Mario. The six car is Mario Andretti, so he's, he's jumped up bit wide. Alright, come through the final couple of corners. I think this might be a better lap. Got just enough time for actually two more laps. Wow, 141.4. I don't think they're going to be able to beat that. That's, that is my best lap around here, actually. Got one car in front of me here. Let's see if we can get around them quickly. This might spoil the lap, though. It's Boisel. A true sports car. So tricky to get around lap traffic in this. It is a point as well. It's a great, a great point, <laughs> SK or Taka, that it's a it's a point to get pull. So haven't really talked about that much, but it's a it's a good way to just get a couple extra points throughout the season. Yeah, forty one four. I don't think I've done a better lap than that. I think I've done a forty one, but. All right, this lap's not going to be very good because I got held up there. I should have one more. Just get around and finish this one. Oh, I just scraped the wall there. All right, it looks like you can get away with it, like the tiniest bit. Did I hit it there too? lap attempt. I mean, it looks like, unless something crazy happens, it looks like I'll get the pull, so this is all just for the, the pride of doing a good lap. I'll try to do as best a lap I can. Uh, <laughs> got on the throttle way too early there, understeered. We're on low fuel, though. This is when the car is at its best. Under steering there. Man, how did I miss the wall? I just turned in and nothing happened.
Or steer there. Oh, almost spin the car out. It's going to kill my time. Come on. Nah, I missed the corners. I think I've overdone it just a little bit. All right, we'll rush to the line anyway and just see. Uh, we will just see what I can get across the line. <laughs> it's still a better lap. Are you kidding me? A 140.5. All right, I smoked him in qualifying then. Uh, I feel pretty good about that. That was a messy lap, too. Could you do a 139 around here, maybe? All right. Happy about that. So, does this sim have force feedback? It has no force feedback. Force feedback wasn't invented when this game came out in 1995, so... Or at least if it was, it was not not on uh, computer sims at the time. So, no force feedback, it's all visual. It was absolutely all visual. Is this the last good IndyCar game? There's Alancer Jr. coming on by. I'm just gonna finish this lap because I wanna make sure anybody that's still on a lap can finish theirs. Um, I, I would say I don't think this is the last good IndyCar game. I think the Codemasters games were a lot of fun, but it's a different sport <laughs> for, for those. That's the IRL and stuff, so... As far as, like, dedicated IndyCar sims, this is definitely in contention for the last good one. Yeah, I'm excited to be on the front row for the pace lap, although I did, I did do some testing being in the middle of the pack for the pace lap, and uh, it worked out. Everything on the track works really well. I did actually... This is something we can talk about today is uh, yellow flags because in my testing in some of the races I did get yellow flags around here which for the road and street courses is not super common I think we actually had some at uh, Long Beach and everything but yeah there might be some yellows today strategy wise and everything it's a really close call to being able to make this on one stop but I think I'm gonna go for the two stopper just in case and we'll have to see uh, have to see how it works out. If, if it feels like I'm easily able to save fuel and make it a one-stopper, we'll go for that. If we get some yellow flags, we'll have to just figure out what to do from there. All right, we'll come around. So it looks like I'm gonna get the pole position. We'll look at the full starting grid in a second. All right. Feel good about that. So, qualifying complete. Ryan Axelson gets the pole by over nearly two seconds. Not quite. Nearly two seconds over Mario Andretti in second. Michael's in sixth. This is so good. Alancer Jr. starting third with Emerson Fittipaldi in fourth. Danny Sullivan will be in fifth position. And then comes Michael, championship leader, back in sixth. We just have to hope, have to hope he falls back today. <laughs> Scott Goodyear's back in seventh with John Andretti in the Porsche in eighth. Bobby Ray Hall, who's been fast various points. He was fast last race, so he's back in ninth. Rick Mears starting the top ten. And then Eddie Cheever, Ari Leindyke, Raul Boisel, Jan Bikas in the 31 starting 14th. Interesting. Teo Fabi in the second Porsche back there in 15th. They get A.J. Foyt doing pretty well on the old, old twisty course for him. But back in 16th, Scott Brayton, Mike Groff, Randy Lewis, Tony Bettenhausen Jr. in 20th. And then uh, Dominic Dobson, Willie T. Ribs in the race. My nemesis from Indy. <laughs> nah, it was, it was my fault at Indy, but we'll, we'll at least say there's a rivalry there for the fun of it. Roberto Guerrero back in 23rd, Dean Hall in 24th, Pancho Carter 25th, Hiro Matsushita in 26th. Did your days, and then Jeff Wood rounds out the grid. 28 cars, so it's going to be a pretty packed house today. And, uh, yeah, I'm super excited that I got the poll for that. Oh, all right, let's, uh, let me just remove the, uh, the shirt, or this shirt. It's going to get pretty hot, I think, uh, doing 62 laps. So it's a 62 lap race. 2.5 mile course. Uh, like I said, it would be it would be a bit of a stretch to make it on one stop, but I think you could you could save that much. So if I get out front and I'm just like blowing everybody away, like it seems like could happen, then 
that might be the strategy to go for, but we'll uh, we'll have to wait and see. But I think it's going to be a two stopper. We'll run it to like always, run it to tanks empty, pit, and assess from there. But most likely take full fuel again, uh, and then run it and uh, and see what happens in this one. It's going to be a long race. I need I need to be very careful through lap traffic. Um, that's going to be, I think the easiest way to, to crash out today is, is making a pass at the wrong time. I've had a lot of instances where you pass somebody and then if you're not like really aggressive in the next corner, they'll pass you back, even if they're very slow. So that, that is another thing I have to really watch out for. Um, so if I make it to the end of this one, it, it'll be a bit of a miracle, but hope you're excited for it. I'm excited for this. I think it's going to be a good race. Thank you all for, for tuning in today. And uh, yeah, we'll see. From here, we're gonna we're gonna go to the nice open. I think it's Portland next, so at least at least some of the grass on the sides of the track. But this is this is gonna be one of the tricky ones this season. So we got the full pace lap. We'll put it on boost one and uh, get around here. And uh, I might ride a little bit closer to the pace car just to avoid clunking wheels there with Mario on the front row. I haven't started on the pole yet for this. I've done a couple tests, make sure it all works and all that stuff. Apparently the pace car is a Camaro, if you can squint your eyes enough <laughs> to see that. I believe it'll be the same Portland we raced in the uh, in the last season. So it has the chicane and everything. I crashed out of that one last season. So if I crashed out with the 89 season running on arcade damage, we can only hope for this one. If you, if you ever get the chance to, I don't know... I'm trying to remember what sim I've done it in, but there's some version of Portland floating around out there for some sim that doesn't have the chicane. It's a really cool first corner like that. I mean, much of, uh, you know, throwing it down the straightaway into that long right-hander, it's kind of a tightening radius too, and it makes it completely different because you're going so much faster. Uh, it's kind of a shame that they can't run it like that. I, like, I wonder if you could improve the runoff at Portland enough at the end of, of the front straight to get rid of the chicane because I feel like the chicane really like kind of ruins that track it, it you know it makes a lot of excitement happen for sure but yeah I think actually AMS, I, I think I have seen the one for IndyCar 2 but AMS 1 sounds like the right sim I would have tried that in uh, yeah I mean you can do whatever you want to the wheel there's just no force feedback in the game so I've got it on pretty light. I've, I've played this for so many years that I just kind of have the feeling for it. But it's interesting. With a, with a sim with no force feedback, it's all visual. So you really have to um, so crawl here down the pedestrian walkway. You really have to pay attention. In a modern sim, you can kind of look around once in a while. And if you're on a straight, you don't have any indication of what your car is doing. So you have to watch like a hawk. That's why it's so hard to... I can't really read chat... <laughs> much and I very much shouldn't reach out on this track uh, just because it's uh, easy to easy to uh, to mess up <laughs> yeah the thing is if too if we get a yellow flag the pace laps are long around this track with uh, with the way the pace car speed is but that, that's just kind of how it is in the sim all right, we're coming through the final couple of corners. Going to put the boost back up. It doesn't really save that much fuel when you're idling around the track, putting the boost low, but it's just a nice habit. All right, we'll come onto the front stretch and try to get a good start here. Just don't pass the pace car. Start of the Detroit Grand Prix, round five, 1990, IndyCar season. I was really far out front. I hope I don't get a penalty for that. 
Okay. No jump start penalty. We'll take it. Run away. Down into turn one. Oh, man. I'm going to leave them all in the dust here. <laughs> that was such a jump start. It's okay. We'll take it. Just try to set a nice, nice steady pace. I can't drive like I was just driving and qualifying. It has to be nice and easy. Sullivan's gotten up into second. Just saw him flash in the mirror there. A lot of fuel on the car, too, so it just feels completely different. I'm sure the, I'm sure the stewards would be looking at that one. But we got away with it. Yeah, they'll pull... The stewards are looking at Axelson like they look at Alex Pillow. No penalty. I can see I can see Sullivan back there, so he's not totally totally that far behind, but nice and easy, nice and smooth. Remember, at some point we're going to start catching lap traffic, and some of them are very slow. And uh, that'll spice things up more than enough. I could only hope that it's a clean sailing until then. Alright, that's sixth gear down the front stretch. Complete lap number one, still in the lead. Sullivan's four seconds behind me. get a really good indication at the end of this lap if I'm pulling away from Sullivan or if he's pulling me in. Interesting, Sullivan's in second too. I feel like, I guess he was quick. Was he quick at Phoenix or was that 89? Nice and steady here. Just don't outdo the braking zones. That's the biggest thing. Second gear through this chicane, I think. So, I feel like I'm seeing Sullivan a little bit more. left-hander here. Such a cool part of the course, diving down like this. The thing that this version of the course really doesn't show you is how bumpy this track was. It's not possible to do an IndyCar 2, so it's nothing on the, the creation of the track. It's just this circuit was extremely bumpy. They're saying that like the inside of this corner, you couldn't actually pass on it because it was just huge bumps and manhole covers and things. So this is like a billboard smooth version of it. All right, we'll see what the gap is this time by. 2.7, oh God, Sullivan's coming for me. Lost 1.3 seconds on that last lap. I wasn't pushing very hard, I'm not pushing right now. I'm just trying to get through the race, so no panic yet. If Sullivan wants to come up and challenge me, we'll figure it out. I think that's it though. I think Unser's about where he was the last lap, so it might just be Danny Sullivan and I duking it up for Detroit. Detroit feels like, I don't think he ever won here, but it feels like a Danny Sullivan track, doesn't it? Nice and easy. Just give it that little extra second. That's down in your lap speed, but it, you just have to make it through this thing. full fuel too right now which is when the car is at its slowest things will pick up you know as we burn some fuel off it'll get a little easier you can hear him now
deep there. I keep out breaking myself into that final chicane. Alright, 2.8. So I pulled out a tenth on him that lap. I just need to keep that pace up. Still not pushing 100%, just trying to keep the car between the walls. That's a good pace. I just need to find the right pace that I, I don't get challenged by him. Be good to pull out a little bit more of a gap, though, because when we get up to lap traffic, things are going to get very spicy. As we've seen all season, all throughout playing this game, the, the AI changed quite a lot over the race, so who's quick right now might not be quick later and vice versa, or they might even be quicker later in the race, so just to take them as they come. There's been a few races like this where I'll run away right at the start, and I don't think I've won any of those. I think, <laughs> I think something always happens. Cleveland last season comes to mind. I think I led half that race, and then it all fell apart. some sort of apex that time. Yeah, Sullivan's not, he's not leaving me alone, but I think I got just enough to stay ahead of him. Let's see. Long laps around this course. I mean, this is a, this is a long track. Two and a half miles and it's very twisty like this. 3.5 seconds. All right, I'm pulling away. I want to pull away a little bit. I'd like to get him up to at least five seconds before we hit the lap traffic, but I don't want to overdo it. Yeah, 62 laps sounds short compared to some of the other rounds this season, but it's it's a long lap, 90, 90 seconds about, or 100 seconds or more. So it's going to be a long race. So far, so good. Danny Sullivan behind, so we got away on the start. Might, may have jumped the start a little bit. They were just slow, I will say that. But got away, <laughs> for lack of a better explanation. And then Danny Sullivan chasing me here. He's, he's quick. I have to drive fast to stay ahead of him, but I think I'm able to hold him here. And we're just working now. Hopefully we get a good number of laps before the lap traffic, but we'll see. That's when things are going to get really interesting. It is a big track, so hopefully they're all spread out. It was back down to 2.7. Lost time that lap. Man. Point three a lap, it's gallons that's on the dash, so 1.3 gallons a lap. Yeah, it's it wouldn't it wouldn't be easy to make it on one stop. So we got about dash is saying we got about 20 laps, 21, 22 laps to go before I need to pit. So that'll be well before halfway. And so I think we're gonna go go the distance, but maybe short fill it. It's always risky to do that. I might if it's only gonna be like a savings of 10 gallons or something, I might I might fill it all the way just so that we've got everything to play with in case a yellow comes out. We'll see how far I go though. If if it seems like I'm going to get close to halfway, then we'll we'll start saving. Just 
nice and smooth here. Good pace so far. Danny is, is quick. He's just haunting me in the mirrors there throughout that whole section. When the track gets slower, he obviously gets gets closer. It's the rubber band. If I'm going to make it 30 laps, then it might be worth trying to save. Because a, a pit stop's long. I thought I'd make it more like 26, 27 laps. I'm short shift a bit. That's one of the easiest ways to save fuel, is just a little bit of short shifting. Yeah, lap traffic's going to play a lot into it, too, because it, it might slow me down a bit, which will help with the fuel saving. But uh, if I have to try to keep Sullivan behind me. He's only 2.6 seconds off. I lost a tenth to him that last lap. A little bit early on the turn in there. You just got to recognize it and correct. I'm really, I'm really worried about the lap traffic. It's, it's been challenging. It's parts of this course, like all of this, you really just can't pass around. So, you've got to uh, just wait. in the top five now 33 seconds off though so it's really just the top four cars have broken away a bit Sullivan's really not far behind me about even on lap times he's been pulling me in some laps and pulling me in a tenth a lap right now just gonna find somewhere I can gain one tenth on him but then Unser, Unser Jr. and Michael's up here man so Michael's gotten gotten up the grid a little bit from his starting position It's, it's a lot more fun when they're in front of you and you're catching them, but when, <laughs> when they're behind you and they're catching you, it makes it very, very anxiety-inducing. Right, long race. Got to keep reminding myself that. We're not in the final laps right now. My lap times will improve as the fuel burns, and that might help. Their times are also going to improve. The AI also burn fuel and might be faster. But it's also when I'm going to catch lap traffic, so... I would expect it in just a few laps. Some of the tail end cars are very slow. Chuck it into turn one. Got to be careful. Turn one's the only corner that I feel like I could spin the car out on pretty easily. All right, I pulled two tenths on Sullivan that lap. Just got to keep doing that. Still not taking too many risks, just nice and easy. A bit close to the wall there. Sullivan's right on me. Found a little extra speed this time. Maybe my turn one was slow. I can see a lapped car ahead. All right, so it begins. Oh, and Alistair Jr. is right there, too. What's happening? Just as I go to catch the lap traffic, the two behind me decide 
This is the time to put the pressure on Ole Axelson. Yellow flag. All right, field's frozen. What's happening? All right, boost down. Save fuel. It's a bit early to pit. What happened? Well, uh, let's catch the pace car, and then we can pause and take a quick peek at why the yellow flag is out. But... I think it's too early to pit. This will help make it a one-stop race, though. I think I think it's a one-stop race now, and I have to do everything I can to, tr to try to get as far as I can over halfway. Interesting. I did not expect that. It's actually nice. I get to take a bit of a break. <laughs> this, this is so tricky. Well, Sullivan pits behind me. I think that's a big mistake, buddy. I think... I don't think you want to pit right now. Unser Jr. stays out, or, the, or he's pitting right now behind him. <laughs> Dixon would pit. He probably Whatever Dixon does is, is what's right, obviously. Oh, Sullivan's out! Danny Sullivan's out of the race. Oh, that's my main competition so far. I mean, Unser Jr. wasn't that far, but... Interesting. I, th I was wondering why he was pitting, because the AI... They're actually not that dumb. That's one of the best things about this sim. And why I think it's so playable even to this day is the, is the AI put together a decent race. Um, all right, we're catching the pace car. I'm just going to make sure I get up to him. We'll, we'll pause for a quick second, take a look at the replay, and uh, see why the yellow flag came out. All right, we'll just rewind to when the yellow flag happened. Yeah, I mean, he broke something. We'll, we'll see it after the race, what exactly happened to him. I won't spoil that right now. All right, let's see if we can see anybody in trouble. Oh, Emerson Fittipaldi's off the track here. Oh, it looks like he had a crash. So coming down into T1, Emo loses the rear end. There he is. I almost did that too, so and cracks the rear. Yeah. Is he is he continuing? I think he might be out. Yeah, so that's why the yellow came out, because he crashed, yeah, and he retired. So no more Emo. Ah, both Penske's are out, you're right. It's just Rick Mears now left in the race. Alright, we got a bit of a, a long yellow flag, so... We're, we have at least one more lap to do before, uh, before we go back to green. So just saving fuel here, just try not to hit the accelerator too much. It's interesting, so really what burns a lot of fuel in this game... I mean, I guess like real life, but it's pretty simple in this game. It's, it's your RPMs. The higher your RPMs go, the more fuel you burn. So you just really want to keep the RPMs low and uh, and the boost as well. But if you're not stepping on the gas, even if you have the boost knob on 9, you still have relatively the same boost setting. So, Was this the last year they ran the city circuit? No, they ran it in 91 as well. Uh, although I don't know if it was the exact same layout. I'm assuming it was the same layout in 91. So... 89 to 91, and then they went to Belle Isle for 92. That is true. Sullivan retiring has put Michael into third, but it has it also, I think, simplified the, the winning proposition here, at least so far. We haven't really seen how fast Michael is, and he's going to be right behind me now, so that could, that could open up a whole new headache. We'll see that. Long race to go. There's still... This is nice, though. I like, I like having a yellow flag. So we're 10 laps in of 62. And uh, we've got two retirees, actually. Emerson, Fittipaldi. All right. Emerson and Sullivan are both uh, both out. Field's all just catching up behind. But so far, so good. No damage yet. Knock on wood. And I've led all the laps. We're at just over half tank of fuel. And because of this yellow, we're going to try to stretch it and make it a one-stopper. Um, so with 62 laps, I have to, at minimum, make it to lap 31, but if I can go further, that's just going to make it easier at the end of the race, so if we can do lap 33, 34, that will be, uh, <laughs> that'll be good. Yes, I won't knock on Jeff Wood, who's in this race, because that would get me damage. All right. Ah, it's great, SK. Thanks for clarifying. So this version's based on 1991. The only difference is the advertising, essentially. It's so nice. I mean, 
for folks that don't know, it's so hard to explain the process and building tracks for this game, but it, it is very time consuming. Not everybody, like, not, it's not known how to do everything, so there's a lot of troubleshooting. So it's a labor of love. So big, big applause to SK for this is not an easy project. I can't imagine. You build like an old, a small oval or something, that's even difficult. But you decide to build a 2.5 mile street circuit through a city. It's pretty crazy stuff. So big applause, big applause. It lets us simulate these seasons. I think we've got every track that ran in, in, in 1990 now. All right. One lap till green. We're packed up here. Everybody's packing up behind. I think it looks great for IndyCar 2, and if you were to see this track in higher resolution, I bet it would look good even for, like, NASCAR 2003 standards. It's just the, the small resolution makes it a little harder to uh, squint and, and maybe see the details, but the buildings all have really nice textures and stuff, and it's, it's a really well-done track. It's, it looks a lot better than the default IndyCar 2 tracks, uh, you know, so it fits into this sim just fine. Yeah, there's enough detail and stuff to uh, drive downtown. I do have Denver as well. I've never driven that track, so i got to do some practice there before we race. There's no way to warm up your tires in IndyCar 2, so we're just going to have to take it. Yeah, I would love... I know it's kind of a dream of all the folks that are into this game to, uh, to have somebody kind of rebuild the source code and... have it uh my number one request for this game would be just to up the resolution if we could run it at even even just slightly higher it doesn't even have to be 4k <laughs> but if we could run it just a slightly bigger resolution i think it would look so much better because you play like i did a stream a little while back uh, nascar legends right or uh, nascar 3 like those games and you can play them at you can actually play those at modern resolutions still square but modern resolution and it's uh it's just so much better detail-wise and stuff. Just adds a lot to it. So that would be my number one feature request. Just, just more, uh, more resolution. Yeah, I saw that Long Beach is under construction. It's cool. We're gonna. Uh, to me, this sim like 88 to 95, 96. A little whistle there. 80, 88 to 96, 97. That's that's where I think this sim fits really well. And uh, we pretty much have all the tracks with, you know, from that time frame. Yeah, I mean, it, it is, you know, you have to realize our, our little niche here. This is a, a small group of folks that still support these old games, so... It is totally possible to decompile and, and work on, but... Yeah, and that's a good point, Steven. This is actually high-res mode. <laughs> there is a low-res mode for this game that's half the pixels, if you can imagine. It'll look a lot more like Indy 500 than if you do that. So at least we have the SVGA. All right, we're coming around. i got to get my head back in the game here. Need to just try to set off. I should be able to get the jump on them. If I got that big of a jump on the initial start, as long as I don't pass the pace car before the green comes out, we're good. But hopefully get a bit of a jump here and then just get back in the groove. I was really in the groove before the yellow came out. And uh, it's nice to have a chance to, to relax for a couple laps, but... It, uh, it's definitely going to make it challenging just to get back into it. We got 26 gallons. I pretty much have burned no fuel over these couple of laps. So this is really going to help make this a one-stopper. But we are... We're going for the one-stopper now, so I need to try to get to lap 33, 34, ideally, so that I don't have to save fuel in the final stint. But here we come. Come to the green. Trying to get as big of a jump. There we go. Green's out. Actually, I didn't get a jump at all. Alonso Jr. is right behind me. Come down to turn one. Oh, Michael! What is that move? Oh, no! Michael Andretti gets around the outside. How did he do that from third? Come up the inside, maybe? No, he's going to outbreak me. How did he get that move done? Passing both Allenson Jr. and myself around the outside. Michael, 
Oh no! All right, just steady to it, steady to it. I cannot let that ruin this whole race for me. There's still a lot of driving to go. Tires are cold now. I just gotta make sure I get through these couple of laps, figure out where I am. I cannot believe he did a double pass like that. Uh, I could have got a better jump on the start too. He's pulling away from me, too. All right. I just got to get the car going before I really try to push it. A bit wide there. So Ari Leindijk's up to fourth ahead of Cheever. Got Alcer Jr. not far behind me. And then Michael Andretti making the double pass into turn one takes the lead. I mean, that man's on a mission this season. How do I, how do I fight that? coming through the chicane. Just can't get that corner right. He just pulls away, cranks away on the straight. All right, Chase is on. 1.8 seconds off. We'll see if I can hold with him at least. If we get up to lap traffic, I might be able to find a way around him. But if he pulls away a lot, then it's going to be tricky. And I, I would guess that almost everybody's on a one-stopper now. But we can always hope that he miscalculates his fuel or something. Right there. Let's try to carry speed. There's a little extra runoff to the right there. has helped out too because we were just about to he catch all that lap traffic so we've got another you know 10 laps now or something until we catch the end of the pack at least to uh, avoid the kind of calamity that I think is coming with that we messed up that chicane I cannot believe you got that jump that's crazy I think around this track, it's it's possible to defend pretty easily from cars. Not easily, but I think it is possible to keep a car, a faster car behind you, just if you take the right lines into the corners and stuff. But yeah, a jump like that where he sweeps around the outside, there's no defending. I think I slowed up a little bit extra too for the first corner because I saw Unser Jr. diving out wide. I thought it was him, but it ended up being Andretti. I just didn't want Unser Jr. to come up the inside. 3.5, he pulled out another couple of seconds, man. All right, I'm not going to throw this race away just trying to catch him, but see uh, the best I can do. We can always hope he's got mechanical issues, too. He's been bulletproof this season so far, but Sullivan had some issues. You never know. It's a demanding course. I think in real life, Michael Andretti did win this race, though, and he lapped the whole field, so that doesn't bode well. That's pretty impressive, though. He came up from sixth on the grid, and he probably was catching me before the yellow flag, but that made it... A lot easier for him to get up here. Ooh, just 
Just got on the throttle a little too early there. You didn't gain as much that lap, but still a little bit. at this point he's definitely got a bit more pace than me so it's either the, the pit stop strategy and something in that or once we get to lap traffic that could really change this race or if we get more yellow flags you never know yeah i don't know where mario is anymore he's gone started on the front row with me he wasn't out of the race last we checked it's just Emerson Fittipaldi brought out that first caution with the crash, and Danny Sullivan had some sort of mechanical. We'll see it at the end of the race. Whoa, I scraped the wall just a little bit. Can't do that. I think I'm all right, but flirting with disaster doing that. Oh, 5.6. All right. I'm not going to ruin this race by trying to catch him because it's not it's just not going to be possible. I'm not giving up, but I will, I will throw the car into the wall if I really push super hard. Goal right now, stay, stay in front of Allenser Jr. and then see what happens once we get to this lap traffic. I think Molly Hatchet's appropriate for Detroit, yeah. correction and it shot me a bit wide but I just got it in time just try to carry speed through the corners as much as you can that's how you can make up a lot of time on a track like this but it also makes it so difficult yeah Michael he's just so fast this season I don't know I mean there shouldn't be anything about him <laughs> that makes him that much better than everybody, but it's, it's either been extreme luck on the different race rolls, or I don't know what it is, but yeah, he pulls out even more, and I think that was a pretty decent lap for myself, so I don't know. Just worried a lot about Hunter Jr. right now. He's not too far off. It's not too hard to destroy the, the suspension around here. But yeah, front wing, if you, you hit the wall even a little bit like I did, it's pretty easy for the front wing to come off. <laughs> and uh, you have to pretty much pit right then. Really hard to limp around with a damaged wing in this game. It's very realistic. I think the thing that makes it hard is that it's, in my opinion, a bit harder <laughs> than it should be to control the cars because you can't feel anything, so... Running the same exact lap, lap after lap is really challenging in this. Yeah, Michael Andretti was my main rival last season too, but I got the better of him. So, it's a bit of payback this year. Keeps it interesting though. Hopefully good good for all you watching. It's This is a tough race. But I think I'm in a good spot right now. I mean, might not be able to beat Michael today, but you got to remember that second place in the championship. Alistair Jr. is in the battle with me for that. So beating him is just as important to help keep me in the middle. Emerson Fittipaldi, who's also in that battle, DNF. So I can get a lot of points on him today. 
Monster Jr.'s right there, though. He's about a second. Oh, a little bit more. Okay. 2.4 seconds off. such an amazing flow to it. I, I absolutely love it. I'm really surprised too because a lot of times these city tracks with the sharp corners are kind of a pain to drive, but I don't know what it is about this one. It's fun. It's challenging though. doing on fuel 16 gallons of fuel Let's see how many laps we're in come across the line should be able to make it to halfway now I would think but how much beyond that tough to say Four laps to go, so we got to do at least another 10 laps. I think we can do it. I don't know. We're gonna do, oof, I don't know. It's gonna be tight. It's still gonna be tight, even with the uh, even with the yellow flag there. One stopper for this is gonna be hard. I might have to really start aggressively saving some fuel. Trust. I know Michael's pulled out 10 seconds now. I mean, that's crazy. Ain't no catching that on pure pace. Let's me get the pole, make me feel all good about myself. Even led the first dozen laps. And then he comes and just stops on me. I gotta beat him at least once this season. I beat him at Milwaukee. But I didn't win. Yeah, we're definitely in splash and dash territory. Keeping Unser Jr. at bay though, just barely. Ooh, I pulled in a little bit. I think Michael's gotten into the traffic. All right. Should start seeing it myself here in a lap or two then. Still plenty of time to go in this race, so mostly just don't wreck the car. <laughs> see a car in front. It doesn't look like Michael Andretti, so we're going to start catching lap traffic and uh, just to really be careful here. And maybe it'll work out to my advantage and I'll catch up to Michael some, but mostly just need to make sure I get through it clean. That's the key part here. that braking zone. Alright, first car in front. 
Let's see, this was my last clean lap. Let's see if I caught him at all. 6.5, wow. Oh, yellow flag again, just as I'm about to catch the lapped cars. All right, save fuel. Uh, I just passed the pit lane, too. What are we at? 21 out of 62. <laughs> this is going to be such a long race. Uh, this is Hero in front of me. I can't believe we've got another caution. But it's going to help help with all the fuel stuff. Hope it's Michael. <laughs> Selfishly. This is going to be a long yellow, too, because we just passed the pit lane, so the pace car is going to be way behind us. Uh, it's too early to pit. I mean, if I pit now, I'm going to have to pit again anyway, so it really doesn't make sense. And I'm going to be sacrificing all this time on low fuel that is when the car is the fastest, so I think I'm staying out. There's no reason to pit. New tires are not faster than old tires, so... I mean, the tires don't wear that much. Yeah, they're barely worn. The rears are a little worn, but they're, they'll be fine. You know, another another 10 laps. So I think we got to stay out and uh, use this to help get us past halfway. And then, I don't know. <laughs> Man, two yellows already. Well, once we catch the pace car and things sort out, we'll look at the, the flag. I'm actually going to drink my coffee today. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it was Michael. We would have passed him already. He crashed, so. So far, I've avoided passing lap traffic, though, because... <laughs> but I think there's going to be lap traffic now right on the start, because they're right in front of me, unless they all pit or something. Yeah, I don't know how many cars he passed before the yellow. Yeah, the car feels fine. Like, I, I don't think pitting right now makes any sense. Especially where we, we know this should really help me make it one stop for the entire race. So, I can hope maybe that Michael pits, because there's no way he's making it to the end from here. too wide in front. This might take a while to sort out because I don't know where the pace car is. Michael's in the pits. Come on. Come on, guys. Go, 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 go. I want to get around him. Oh, okay. Hero's going to pit. Days is going to pit. I need to get in front of him. Let's go. Yes, yes. I got him. All right. I'm in front of Michael now. He's just going to have pit. And, uh... Oh, come on. No. Don't pass me. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm in the lead again. I think I've got uh, Willie T behind me. I can see Unser Jr. back there, and I think Michael's in third. Michael pits, though. He's going to have to pit again. I had, to, I had to rush there because if I had laid back, he might have got out of the pits ahead of me, which obviously would be bad. So he's not only did he just pit and... I mean, unless we get a ton of yellow, there's no way he's making it to the end. So he's going to have to pit again. I also have to pit. He's going to be on full fuel, too. This could go either way, because I'm going to have to pit here in, like, 10 laps. And when I pit, he's going to be a way out front. And if a yellow comes out before he has to pit, that's really going to mess me up. But this might have opened up a way that I can win this race today. We have to hope that... From here, it stays green for a while, so I can so I can make a pit stop at the end of my fuel stint and then wait till he stops. And hopefully, everything works out. There's the pace car. I have a few lap cars right in front of me on this start, which will make it fun. <laughs> yeah, we got a Teo Fabi top five right now. Things are all jumbled up. This is interesting. This is one of the more interesting races we've had so far. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't discount more cautions in this one because so far, both times I was just about to catch the lap traffic, we had a yellow flag. Oh, and I did say we would look at what happened. So let's take a quick gander. We'll zoom it, uh, rewind back to when the yellow came out. It's a good race so far. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I really, really hope I can make it to the end. I'm just so worried. It's going to, uh, I don't know. It's so easy to throw it away. Just going to go back to when the yellow came out. 
There it is. All right, let's see if anybody's in the wall or something. A couple of cars in the pits. Looks like, oh, Dominic Dobson. Well, at least I won't have trouble passing him today, but same exact spot as, uh, as Emmo. Like, same incident. Note for note. Interesting. All right. So Dominic's now out. Let's see. Let's look at our uh, our list here. We got a few cars left down. Willie T. Thays. Yeah, Willie T's behind me. Didier Thays. Matsushita. Then Dobson's out. Dean Hall's out. And then Sullivan and Fittipaldi. So we got four cars out of the race. Hall must have had a uh, mechanical as well. I didn't know Dominic was from California. Dominic's not, not too common of a name in the United States, so I just figured he was from somewhere else, but yeah, he's from California. Alright, so if I'm using 1.3, we're going to make it about another 10 laps, which will get me to lap 32. It's still going to be close to make it all one stop, I think. Oh, is he German-born? Okay, that would make more sense. It's, uh... I don't know of anybody named Dominic that's from the United States. I'm sure there. I'm sure there's people. Stuttgart. Gotcha. Yeah, I watched, just to kind of get in the mood for this, I watched the 90 Detroit Grand Prix, and uh, they announced him as being from California, and I never knew that. But I guess he grew up there then. That's like they, they say always Mario Andretti is from the United States, like, he was born in Croatia or Italy at the time, like, you know, one of those. Yeah, I'm, I'm gambling a little bit here today, but I don't think I'm going to win anyways, but I think I'm fast enough to, like, finish in this top three. So, I, I think staying out's still the right call here, and just hope it works out in my favor. But I'll, I'll need a little bit of luck to win this one today. That's what it's all about, right? All right, one lap till green. <laughs> so we're going to go green with 39 laps to go. And I need to try to make it as far as I can. I might be able to make it to like 29 to go, 30 to go. So oof, I'm barely going to be, be on the good side of things. Let's see. We will see. I always thought his, uh, Dominic Dobson's car for this season was really weird looking because it has the big number on the cowling, which just doesn't look very, like in this era, it doesn't look very IndyCar to me. I guess like if you rewind the clock a bit to like the early 70s or 60s especially, the cars had big numbers on the side. But uh, by this point, it's just the little numbers on the wing and stuff. Yeah, there's a couple cars between, so I got... Three cars in front of me here, Bettenhausen, I think Groff, and uh, Wood, maybe. And then Willie T is definitely the car behind me. And then, I don't know if Unser is behind him or not. But Unser Jr., I mean, he's only .9 behind me coming across the line last time. So, I think uh, Unser Jr. and... And then Michael got behind him. Now I'm really interested to see if I can pull away from Michael now. He's he's on full fuel. I'm on very light fuel. So I'll have a really a really uh, fast car at this point. After the tires get up to temp. I'll be a sitting duck for a couple laps, like always. <laughs> but once the tires get up to temp, I'm going to have a fast car here. And uh, hopefully I can get around these, these three lappers pretty quickly. And put some speed, put some pace on on these guys behind. Monster Jr. is on the same strategy as me too. We can't forget that. So, I mean, he's he's trying the one stopper as well. It seems. Thank you, Peter. I really appreciate everybody being here today. It's a good crowd. I know everybody likes these. I like these too. <laughs> it's so challenging, this though. But a fun race over the yellows really spice it up. Yeah, it is a tough track to pass. I mean, as always, the AI, I feel like, have a bit of an advantage. 
Um, they have a bit of an advantage getting through traffic sometimes. It's just really, really hard to make sure you're gonna make a clean pass. You have to be like very obviously able to pass. You can't, the AI are never gonna give you a spot, even a lapped car. So you have to make sure you're making the pass. And the AI, like AI to AI, they just kind of know it better so they can take advantage of each other a bit more. All right, we're gonna come down to get the green here. Um, we'll see if I can at least get around one of these guys before turn one. But I won't be able to jump the start this time for sure. Got 12.6 gallons, probably about nine laps of fuel, I think. And uh, we gotta push this as far as we can get it. If I'm if I'm gonna hope to make it make it on one stop here. Alright, crank up that boost. First lap car, the first car, so Tony Bettenhausen, he's at the end of the lead lap, and he's going to be the starting car. And uh, I'm going to try to quickly put these guys a lap down and then get away from everything. All right, here we come to the green. Oh, they're so spread out. All right, green's out. We can pass before the line, so we'll just get up the inside of Wood. And then Groff's here on the outside. Get him, too, before turn one. All right, get around a couple cars at least. Ooh, fly it down into turn one. No, 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 no. I hold it off the wall, but I'm gonna I can't I can't pull out into traffic there. Dang. Alright, a spin. I got away with a spin, which is so tough to do. Ah Alright, don't ruin the race. That really sets me back. I'm back to twelfth now. I'm so lucky I didn't hit the wall there. <laughs> I floored it in first gear to try to keep it off the wall. Oh no. I gotta try to get around all these guys as well. No! Uh, that was gonna be so interesting to see if I could actually make a pass, but I think I broke the car by flooring it there. That's so interesting. Yellow flag is out again for me. Uh, that's, that is mechanical failures. Who's to say if that was caused by my spin there? Now that's never happened in the season yet. The car gave up on me. I mean, when I spun off the track there, I floored it to try to keep it off the wall, which did work, but I wonder if that played into breaking the car. Ugh. <laughs> that was that was such a good race up to this point. No, I'm not restarting. That's I know the rule generally was in the first stint, but the stints here are so long. It we're 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 deep into the race at this point. We're deep into the race. I think I've got to accept this as my fate. Ah. Uh. Yeah, there were quite a few drivers far behind. I think they just were trying to get back around to get by in the pace car. Uh, let's watch that restart real quick. We're going to simulate the rest of the race as always, and uh, we'll see what happened. Yeah, I think Laguna 89 season was my last failure. You're right. And uh, Michael also failed in that race, and it he would have won the championship had he won that race. Um, so let's let's watch this restart. No, it was lap 23 or something. All right, so here we are, coming to the line. Green's out. I got right around Jeff Wood there, Mike Groff as well. He was very slow, so I got up the inside of him. Come take it into turn one. I just put a lot into the car. The tires were cold. I kept it off the wall pretty good. And I wanted to pull out, but I would have hit the, the lapped cars. And uh, I, got, I got away with that. But And then coming around here, the drive shaft or the half, half shaft? What is a half shaft anyway? <laughs> the half shaft fails. Uh, it was gonna be a lot of work to try to pass the cars in front of me and get back up, up the track, up the order. There it is, it dies right there. 
man, that was that was looking to be such a good race too. We're gonna simulate the rest of the race, so we'll get to see what happens at least. Um, well, I want to watch just from on board. I just put way too much much lateral load into the tires. That's what the word I was looking for. Put too much lateral load into the tires. The cold tires, a little bit worn, right? We saw we saw the uh, the tire wear was a little bit on the rear, so that didn't help. And uh, and spun it out. But it's really tough to say if that's what caused the half shaft failure. We'll never really know. Just like real life, you just never know what actually happened. But then I'm. I'm thinking of the proposition of now trying to pass all these cars, and, uh... There goes my half shaft. Oh, man. One more one more view. I want to take a look at it from, like, Alancer Jr. and see see what it looked like me spinning off. We've got plenty of time now. <laughs> this race was, was going to be very long, because we're an hour and a half into the stream, and we were about a third of the way into the race, so... So here's uh, Alancer Jr.'s view off the start. You can see me looking up the insides. Probably thinking that dang Axelson. He's actually going to get up the inside of Willie T here. All right. So Alancer Jr. gets up the inside. He looks at Axelson passing in front and running out of talent. Ugh. I'm gutted. <laughs> uh, that's such a disappointment. All right. So we will... We'll resume and accelerate time. Yeah, just drinking coffee. All right, so Alcer Jr. pits. Bunch of people pitting. Michael Andretti's now in the lead now. Alcer Jr. still hasn't pit. So we're only 25 of 62. 25 laps in. And uh, Alcer Jr.'s still out. So is he going to make it on one stop? And then we're going to see... Uh, we're going to see Andretti have to pit later. So I'm rooting for Al here. we got to steal the win from, from Michael Andretti. All right. So it'll take a while. So simulating a race in this, it takes a while. <laughs> so it's not very quick. I kind of like it like that. So you can actually digest what's happening. If you look towards the bottom, I'm going to end up getting 24th on this. Yeah, a lot of yellows. I feel like I was driving really well today, too. I mean, I'm happy I didn't make a driving error. Well, I guess I did. <laughs> I did make a driving error. But at least the DNF wasn't caused directly by me hitting a wall. All right, we're back under green. Michael Andretti's in the lead now. He has a fresh car, but he definitely has to pit again. Alancer Jr. will have to pit as well pretty soon. But we'll see, uh, we'll see how he does battling here with Michael. They're both just absolutely pulling away from Ari and Eddie. All right, Alancer Jr., three seconds off. He's not he's not falling back too much. There goes Bobby Ray Hall in the pits. I expect Alancer Jr. here to pit in a minute, and he might not make it to halfway then. Did Al Jr. pit under yellow? Interesting. He's not that much slower than Michael. So it'll be interesting once they catch up to lap traffic again. We'll probably see that gap close a little bit. Halfway in the race now. And uh, the two up front are smoking everybody else. Bobby Rahal, did he retire? Oh, Bobby Rahal's out with an engine issue. Days is out as well. Lots of failures today. Detroit's rough. I don't. I didn't see Alancer Jr. pit, but I won't say he didn't. All right, we're well over halfway now. Alancer Jr.'s still out there. <clears throat> if he pits soon, then he was definitely running it to this point. Thirty-four laps and he's just four seconds off. I mean, that's nothing with traffic and stuff. Bumped. I didn't even make it to halfway though. But I made it to one, th one third into the race. Three yellow flags, and then a half shaft failure. 
Yeah, John's not too far out of the top 10 in the Porsche there. Teo's way up there. Might be a good day for Porsche. No, 5.4 seconds, 37 laps in. I imagine they're gonna they're gonna catch up to lap traffic here any second because it's been green now for a handful of laps. There we go. They're starting to lap up to 14th. Scotty Brayton's gonna lap down. Oh, Alancer Jr.'s pulled in 3.9. Alright, get him little Al. <laughs> Al Alancer Jr. was always my favorite back then. It's like old times rooting for him. AJ Foyt just went a lap down. 3.5 seconds. Come on. Yeah, I, I think Alistair Jr. must have pit. So they're on the same pit strategy. It's one more pit stop. It would have been so cool to see how it worked out for me. I mean, I would have needed some yellow flags. 2.5 seconds. Scott Goodyear goes a lap down. Wow, they're lapping everybody. Like In real life, Michael Andretti lapped the entire field. So pretty realistic stuff. Oh, he's falling back. The traffic was working out for Alistair Jr. for a minute there. All right, 42 laps in, back to 3.5 seconds off. We've still got quite a ways to go in this. It's two-thirds done now. Oh, 7.3 seconds. Yeah, something something held up Alancer Jr. a lot there. All right. Nine seconds off. Oh, it looks like he's really falling off now. Yeah, if they pit, I mean, it benefits of if Alistair Jr. can stay out longer, it means he's got a lighter car and uh, he'll be able to pull some time. So definitely in IndyCar 2 generally makes sense to go long if you can. Because you'll be faster. Okay, Michael Andretti jumps in the pits. Alistair Jr. to the lead. Come on, little Al. <laughs> and, uh, Michael comes out in second. We got uh, other cars pitting. We're Rick Mears in the pits. So I imagine Alistair Jr. is going to pit here in a couple of laps, but if he could do at least a couple laps before pitting, he might really... Oh, 22 seconds now. Yeah, it looks like their lap times are better than my, my pole time. Some serious speed. We got 139.6. 26 seconds. Come on, little Al. <laughs> it's going to be close when he comes in. He's going to come in any lap now, I imagine. Do another lap. No, he's pitting. He's pitting. Come on out. Ooh, he gets out in front of him. He gets out in front of him. Five seconds. All right. Alancer Jr. in the lead. Alancer Jr. in the lead with, with four, 13, 14 laps to go. It's all going to be about the lap traffic. Michael's going to have a bit warmer tires. 2.5 seconds off. We might see him start start flirting with each other there. Is AJ, AJ way up the order. Yeah, it, it pretty much always pays to stay out in IndyCar too, because you're the tires tires don't seem to lose grip that much, um, so you're just better off with low fuel. That's kind of what you want to prioritize. Oh, come on, little Al. 4.5 seconds. He's pulling away from him now. I mean, it's probably all traffic and everything, but once it's we'll watch the last few laps, especially if it's close. Six seconds off. Who, who knew staring at a standings board could be so exciting? I mean, just looking for Little Al to at least make sure Michael doesn't get max points. But I am battling Little Al in the championship more than Michael at this point, so it's this is going to hurt me even more. We did outlast Danny Sullivan. That is important. Man, Michael's, or uh, Alan Sir Jr., oh, you lose a little bit of time there. They're trying to get through some some traffic now, I bet. Under 10 laps to go. <laughs> a standings board for a race that isn't real. You're right. Oh, nine seconds. All right, this is good. Monster Jr. then. 142-1. It's great laps. I, I don't think I had anything for these two on on raw pace. It might have been, been on pit stops and stuff. But... I guess with the fact that they both just pit once after the yellow, it would have, even if I had stretched it, it probably wouldn't have worked out for me. Oh no, Atlancer Jr. with an engine failure with five laps to go. <laughs> oh, Michael's gonna crank the engine down, boost all the way to the bottom. No. Little Al. 
We could only hope. We could only hope that Michael gets some sort of failure here in the last couple laps. But I don't think we're going to be that lucky. Michael, again. Michael, Michael Andretti. What a season this guy's putting together for us. That's so sad. Alancer put up such a great fight. I'm happy I wasn't the only car to have a failure today, but that's so disappointing. Uh, coming to one to go then. Or two laps to go at this point. Michael's just sailing. Come on, Ari. Do something special. Oh, Jan Bikas has an accident. Yellow flag on the final lap. We'll watch what happened to Jan here in a second. But Michael's going to come around under yellow to get the win. Oh, my God. I think I could have finished second today had the car lasted. Let everybody cross the line. It'll it'll jump to the final results once it's done. Something happened with Jan Bikas right at the end of the race. We'll, we'll go back and watch. Maybe just an engine failure or something on the track. There it is. Final results. Michael and Jetty wins. We'll, we'll analyze those more in a second. There's my sad car. Very sad. All right. Let's look at the replay real quick here, and I'll save it. Just so we have it for posterity. Not that it's a good one to watch. All right. Let's rewind a bit. I can't believe... Alistair Jr.'s car failed. It's just over two hours this race. Right, there's the checkered flag. There's the yellow flag. We'll see We'll see how this happened. Let's rewind to see how this happened to uh, Alistair Jr. We got plenty of time. <laughs> I don't want the stream to be ten minutes long or else folks will know if they go to watch it later what happened. All right, here's Alan Jr. We'll watch his final little bit. So he's leading at this point on top of the world. Passing a bunch of lap traffic. I never got to pass lap traffic today. Oh, he almost hit the wall there. Oh, he just pulls it into the pits. That was it for him. So let me, we'll go find, uh, here's Michael. Or that's Mario. The cameras are also really nice around this track. Making good cameras in IndyCar 2 is not easy. Here comes Rick. Rocket Rick making making the finish on a road circuit. That's good. Here's Jan. All right, so something happens to Jan here. Maybe Ben Steering, yeah, he tapped the wall. It said engine failure, but we'll go with Ben Steering. We'll see what happened to Jan here towards the end of the race. Gets passed by Eddie Cheever there. Yeah, I love I love this section of the the cameras here. It's where I took the thumbnail from because it's nice and close up to the cars, sweeping down under the pedestrian bridge. Such a cool part of the of the circuit. We'll find when uh, Jan has some sort of accident or something to bring out the yellow flag. It said accident, so he he had a crash. Oh, is that it? I don't think so. I'm, I'm half anticipating it being into turn one. Here comes Rick Rick up behind him. All right, here they come down to turn one. Is this going to be the crash? Does Jan Bikas gets spooked a bit by Rick Mears coming up the inside. Throws it into turn one. Nope. No spin. The series is quickly turning into how can Ryan Axelson DNF? <laughs> I think of DNF now and two of the races, but almost DNF'd in all of them at this point. My cheering section is sad today. Did I see their banner? No. What are you saying? Is there is there a banner here? Oh, you sent me a screenshot. Of, where is that, SK? I didn't see the banner, but is there a banner for Ryan Axelson here? See ya, Steve. Thank you. Come on, Jan. What what happened to you here towards the end? White flag. So I mean, something happens to Jan Bikas on this last lap. So we'll see. We'll see what it is. 
It's not going to be a turn one crash, though. There he is. Oh, Jan. It's easy to do that there. I have done that. It's on the side of the hotel before the convention center. Hold on. We'll, we'll stay on board with Michael Andretti here for the uh, last section of the race. So here comes the yellow fight. He's just going to putt around now. Yeah, that was a big crash with Jan. I don't know. I didn't see anything, SK. Will I see it from this, this point of view? Alright, so this is this is Michael Andretti just limping to the finish, but we're on the lookout for a Ryan Axelson banner somewhere. TV cam. All right, we'll keep a lookout. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> Can you guys see it? Hold on. Number one, Axelson, go. Number one, Axelson. Can I, can I see it from any other view? <laughs> That's so cool. There it is. Oh, hold on. You won't be able to see it. Let me fix this. Oh, thank you, SK, for putting that in there. That's so cool. It's like real life. It's like it almost even happened. Ah, uh, well, the, the cheering section is sad today, for sure. I tried. I tried my best on this one. I really, uh, I tried to put in the practice and learn the circuit, and I thought I drove pretty well. I miscalculated that T1. And uh, it's tough to say if the if the half shaft failure was, was from that. It could have been. But it is just the way it goes sometimes. It's still a lot of fun. Really, uh, really, really cool circuit. I think, I think this adds a lot to doing this season. Belle Isle is a great track. I like Belle Isle a lot as far as a road circuit, but it's fun when you race the uh, appropriate circuits for, for the season that you're racing. So, massive thank you to SK for building this track. Sorry I couldn't finish the race here, but at least did 20 odd laps. Had a lot of fun doing it too. So we'll watch, we'll watch Michael just crawl across the line and get his win. And then we'll look at the final results, the championship standings, and the schedule, and all that, and wrap things up. So here he comes through the final chicane for the, what, the third time this season. Michael Andretti's going to come to the line and win the Detroit Grand Prix. What a guy. What a guy. Unstoppable, really, this season. If he doesn't win the championship, something major is going to have to happen. All right, so let's take a look here at the standings. Final results. Michael Andretti, like we thought, gets the win quite easily, mind you. 36 laps led. I mean, I guess I will have the second most laps led, which is not worth anything. But he wins, though. Michael Andretti wins ahead of Ari Leyendijk. This is actually going to shake up the points quite a lot because a lot of the quick guys... I think everybody else DNF'd. So Michael Andretti was was the last man standing, essentially. But Ari Leindyke gets second place from Teo Fabi back in third. Eddie Cheever fourth. Rick Mears, Rocket Rick on a road circuit, street circuit nonetheless, finishes in, in fifth position ahead of Scott Goodyear. And Mario from his second place on the grid finishes in seventh. We have Poncho Carter back in eighth. John Andretti finishes ninth. And then AJ Foyt squeaks out a top ten on a road circuit as well. Good on him. Good on AJ. Old AJ. Alright, Raul Boizel comes in 11th. Head of Randy Lewis, Roberto Guerrero, Scott Brayton, Tony Bettenhausen. Rounds out our top 15. And if we continue on down, there's only three more cars running. Jeff Wood in the 16th. Uh, Mike Groff back in 17th. And Hiro Matsushita finishes last car. I saw him briefly. <laughs> we just never got to lap him at all. But uh, just saw him there towards the end. We saw Jan Bikas have an accident. Alan Sir Jr. with an engine failure. This is such a long list of retirements. Oh, did I misspell Guerrero's last name? Well, I can fix that. Willie T. Ribs back in uh, 21st with suspension issues. Didier Day's electrical issues. Bobby Ray Hall gets engine issues. 
I had half shaft issues, but it just says DNF here. Dominic Dobson, we saw his accident. Same thing as Emerson Fittipaldi there. Dean Hall, engine failure. Danny Sullivan, engine failure. He was quick today. Danny would have been a challenge. And then MO, yeah, we saw the accident. 62 laps. Interesting race time. I don't know what that means. Two hours, three minutes, 38 seconds. 61 miles an hour. Four caution flags for seven laps. Long cautions around this track. It's just very slow. We'll save that. Ah, oh, man. Disappointing. That's it from Detroit. So, we look at the points. What do we got? Michael Andretti extends his lead. 91 points. He's got over double the points that I've got at this point. He's gonna have to have starting some uh, starting to have supreme bad luck, or there's no hope. There's no hope. Ari Leindyke jumps up to second in the championship. I mean, I suppose Ari did win the Indy 500 in real life, so it's not that weird that he's fast. But it's just surprising to see for some reason. But Ari up to second. Bobby Rahal. I mean, Mr. Cons Consistency. I think being up in third. He just hasn't had a bad race yet. I guess. Did he, well, did he DNF today? Uh, Bobby's in third. Anyways, I guess we all DNF'd, so that's why none of this has changed. <laughs> I got one extra point, but Alistair Jr. is still in front of me. Had a Ryan Axelson. Fifth. So I'm back to fifth in the championship. Emerson Fittipaldi just behind. Rick Mears, Eddie Cheever on 33 points. I mean, Danny Sullivan back in that. Danny has some runs like he had today and doesn't DNF. He, we might see him yet. So really, top nine here. We're all battling second through ninth, I would say. We're battling for, for second in the championship right now. And uh, Michael is just in another another time zone, another level. Five for five in top fives. You, you really just can't uh, beat that. The thing that's crazy, I'll, I'll give you uh, behind the curtain just a little bit on this. Like, the thing that's nuts is that in some of my test races, Michael has DNF'd and things. And so it is it is pure chance that he's not had an issue yet. AI, like my car, they'll just randomly have issues. And so we just keep getting... Every time you start a race, you get like a roll of the dice, like old Dungeons and Dragons. And somehow Michael Andretti's rolling a nat 20 every single time. <laughs> and he's got like the perfect season going, so... I don't know if we'll we'll have a shot at it, but at some point his his luck's gonna have to run out, right? I hope. I don't know. But Dean Hall got a point somewhere. Did your days? So we got 23 cars with points at this point, at this stage. We'll say stage. Roberto Guerrero. I'll fix his name. Jan Vikas. All right. <laughs> Michael Nat 20 Andretti. I mean, it's, it is kind of the same system. Like, you give the drivers a, a, a range in how fast and slow they can be, and then it just picks kind of random numbers, and it randomly determines, you know, is that car going to have a failure? And somehow he's just having the perfect season. But that's why this is so much fun. I could boot this up and run the exact same race again, and it would be completely different. Uh, I wish more racing games could do that these days. All right. Next season race, though. So we are off to Portland next. We're in the stretch of the season where it's a lot of road circuits. We've got Portland, Portland, then Cleveland, Meadowlands. That's going to be another tough one. And then Toronto, which I crashed out of last season, which with on, on, on arcade damage, we'll see how it goes with realistic. But, but we have to do those four more road circuits, street and road circuits, until we get to Michigan. And uh, I cannot wait for Michigan. But it's a, it's a long ways till then. We only have two more ovals on the season. It feels it feels a lot like the calendar these days. No Pocono this season, unfortunately. But Michigan, and then late in the season, we got Nazareth. We got the All-Star Race at some point, and then. So, a lot of uh, a lot of racing to go in this season. But it didn't work out for me today. I appreciate everybody joining. I hope it was fun to watch regardless. And uh, I, I will try to not make it as long until the next one. Portland should be fun. A little bit more space. And hopefully the car sticks under me. Hopefully I don't throw it in the wall at some point. And hopefully Michael Andretti doesn't just win again. But thank you for watching. I hope you had a good time. Have a good rest of your weekend. And I'll see you later.